So this little quick tutorial is going to show you how to make a pattern and how patterns work technically in, in Illustrator. So to begin with, I am going to create an ellipse and I'll fill the ellipse with black and stroke it with none because the first pattern will be something very simple. I'll duplicate my circle and then I'll copy and paste my circle, just making a smaller one and setting it underneath the first and then the last one above the second. It is a good idea to consider how the elements of your pattern fit inside of a perfect square. So to create a perfect square, I'll click and drag with the square tool or rectangle tool and size my rectangle, which will have a fill of none and a stroke of black, seeing how I contained my elements. And you can see that it doesn't or they don't fit so well into a square. They're a little bit more rectangular in layout than you might initially guess. So I'm going to move them over a little bit because I'm looking at the distances between the edges of the elements and the edges and the elements spacing between each other. And I'm not going to fuss this one too much because I want you to see what will happen how with this first pattern and how I can change it. I'm just going to move the rectangle or the square off screen and uh, wildly select all four of these elements. And this is how you make a pattern in Illustrator. Whatever it is that's going to be in your initial pattern tile, that's going to be the repeating thing. So you draw it, you create it, you select it, and then with all the pieces selected, you simply drag it into the swatches panel. You can see the plus symbol on my cursor. And when I release, there is the pattern. It's there now. So to use the pattern, I'll create a rounded rectangle and I'll fill it with the pattern. Not bad. If I draw a more amorphous shape with my pen tool, something that you may begin to notice oddly is that the pattern itself exists in space on the page as if I am revealing the pattern. Isn't this so weird? Look what's happening. You see the relationship at the edge of this oddball shape I'm creating to the curved corner rectangle? So if I were to move this over, apparently I have a preference here that needs to be checked and I'm going to show you this special preference. <clears throat> if you go to, on the Mac, Illustrator Preferences, under General, here on this initial panel under General, there is a check on Transform Pattern Tiles. Now, I'm going to click that off because that is the default. Checked off, not checked on the way I had it, was not default. Now it is default. So... My point was a little misconstrued in so far as notice how when I move the shape around, you can see how it's the pattern is filling it is different now. Isn't that weird? Why is it not the same? It's not the same because in Illustrator, it's as if the pattern is already on the page. How weird is that? So if I draw a shape again here, and I draw that shape in close proximity to the first shape I drew, you can see it's almost as if they're going to join together. The way that you, the way you can do it is, I'm going to click away, is if you change this preference. And that preference is under general. <coughs> this checkbox will allow you to keep the pattern in the spot where you had it which is how I had it at first. Now 
not exactly, no. Uh, I think you need to be really aware of what you're doing when you're doing this, but you could do it in more than one document. In any case, now if I move this, it keeps the pattern, right? It's not making it look like it's filling it with a different part of the pattern. That's my preferred way of doing it, but that's not the default way. It's also important, I think, to recognize that when you're working with patterns in Illustrator, depending on what you're using the pattern for, it's very easy to create a pattern that looks like a mistake. And I think this looks okay. I think I was just lucky. They're not equidistantly spaced, but the randomness is okay. It doesn't feel like there's big gaps between things. Everything is not exactly aligned in a specific pocket or space. And if you select some of the existing patterns, you can see how very specific they are. There are many patterns. If you click on the flyout menu of the swatches panel, and you go to open swatch panel, go to patterns, within each one of these there are several choices. So even something like nature animal skins, which will open up a side pad panel for patterns. I'm going to use the large thumbnail view. <clears throat> these are pretty well engineered so that when you're using them, they don't look awkward or repetitive, too repetitive. But they're patterns, so they are repetitive. The last thing I'm going to say in this first part of the tutorial is that if you zoom in really close to a pattern, often you can start identifying where the pattern elements are that are repeating. So this piece, this piece, this piece. Now here's something really weird, okay? <clears throat> For this one panel block here of the peacock feather pattern. If I go to Object Expand, and I'll expand the fill and click away, it doesn't seem like anything happened. I'm going to go again, Object Ungroup. Did I get it? One more time. Object Expand. I'm going to keep expanding this a few times. Maybe it'll happen. Ungroup. Doesn't seem to be doing it. Sometimes, there we go. Sometimes you can see exactly how these things are drawn, which is a really great hint. Isn't that wacky? So you can take them apart, which in my personal experience of learning Illustrator was very helpful because it helped me to see how works are done that I didn't think of how to do. Does that make sense? Now, I was really lucky there and got exactly what I wanted, which was I clicked right on the edge and found one of the pattern squares. And this pattern is so well designed that the top piece of this part of the feather design is actually finished at the top. And so if you click around in a pattern and you hit just the right spot there, you can see the pattern tile within the whole situation. Crazy stuff, huh? So being able to draw a really well-designed pattern tile does revolve around understanding what elements you need to have overlap and what elements you are going to have flow over an edge, and also the layering of shapes to create complex effects. One thing that you cannot put into a pattern is a gradient. Having said that, you could put it in afterwards, like if this whole background selected as one piece, you could expand and ungroup the pattern tile or make the background transparent. So I could put a colored I could put a color, I'm back here, rectangle behind this pattern with a gradient, even though I don't have a gradient in it now. Now I do, and I could cut it and send it to the back because the
pattern tile does not have a fill, such as my own pattern tile that I showed you also, the background does not have a fill. So it could be on top of a gradient later. It will yell at you and say you can't do that. All right, so I'm going to just stop that movie.